Chandrayaan-3 has successfully landed on the surface of the Moon near the lunar south pole. Meanwhile, Luna 25 also touched the surface of the Moon, but maybe not in the way that Russia would have intended. Welcome everyone to this Moon Landing Space News Update special, so stick around and let's get going. Welcome back everyone, and what an incredible week of spaceflight action it has been. Chandrayaan-3, yes, they have successfully touched down at the Lunar South Pole, making India the fourth country overall to make a soft landing on the surface of the Moon. It was also close for Lunar 25 as well. If you remember in my last video, both of them were on their way to the Moon when I left you last time, but we'll have more of them in just a few moments. But yeah, Wednesday the 23rd of August 2023, what a successful day for the Indian Space Research Organization and the whole of the nation of India. Uh, Chandrayaan-3 set out and did exactly what it said it was going to do. It's been a 40-day odyssey. In fact, it's been a 20-year odyssey in the making. So, how did this all come about? Well, let's go back. 2003 and India and the ISRO came out and said that they had plans to send a spacecraft to the moon. In 2008, Chandrayaan-1 successfully became the first Indian spacecraft to orbit the moon and they also had an impactor which crash landed into the moon. Not only that, but Chandrayaan-1 became the first spacecraft to detect signs of ice at the Lunar South Pole, hence all of the amazing interest that we have in that particular region of the Moon. In 2019, Chandrayaan-2 came ever so close to making a landing at the Lunar South Pole, were it not for a slight software issue. And then we come four years later with Chandrayaan-3. As they say, third time is a charm, and in this case, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it launched on the 13th of July aboard an LVM-3 Mark III rocket from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre in India. It then set about taking the long way, the scenic route, to get to the moon, gradually raising its apogee, eventually freeing itself from Earth's gravitational influence with a successful translunar injection burn on the 1st of August. On the 5th of August, Chandrayaan-3 reaches the moon and begins a 18 day slow descent, gradually lowering its orbit until finally Wednesday the 23rd of August 2023, perhaps a day earlier than we initially would have expected. But yes, the Vikram lander along with the Pragyan rover inside its little cocoon detached from the interim propulsion stage and began its powered descent just after 1pm UK time. It was a nail-biting half an hour for anyone that was watching the feed. And what a great feed it was from the ISRO. It was full of information, great scenes from the control room, as well as great scenes uh, from their massive screens up in the control center there, showing the live feed from the onboard cameras. You could just sense that there was a, a palpableness in the air in that control room, a, a real uh, sense of excitement. In fact, you could tell that the whole of India was behind this mission. And just maybe there was a gut feeling that this time around, everything was going to go to plan. So yeah, a series of deorbit burns were carried out, a powered descent, and everything was going nominally. So the spacecraft, with all its new contingencies on board, remember, this was heavily upgraded following the failure of Chandrayaan-2. That telemetry, that guidance was all working beautifully. It adjusted and adjusted. And Vikram, with everything going well, slowly lowered itself down. Until just around about half past one UK time. Yes, success. Vikram, Pragyan and Chandrayaan-3 as a whole landed at the lunar south pole. Uh, the exact region was 69.37 degrees south by 32.35 degrees east, making it the southernmost lunar landing site to date. 
what an incredible achievement. You saw the, the scenes of jubilation in the control room there. And very quickly, we got some congratulatory speeches from the president of ISRO, along with some other key figures who have made this mission happen. We then had an incredibly beautiful speech from Indian Prime Minister Modi, who said that this achievement was dedicated to all of humanity. And indeed, there are science scientists all around the world that are eagerly awaiting the data that's going to start to come back from the lander and the rover. Remember, this mission is all about looking for signs of ice below the, the lunar regolith. And there's a whole host, a brand new suite of scientific uh, instruments on board these spacecraft. I cannot wait uh, for the data that we're going to start to get back over the next couple of weeks and into the coming months as well. It's going to be an incredibly exciting lunar day for Vikram and Pragyan. And in fact, the excitement didn't just stop with the landing itself and then all of the speeches. So just a couple of hours after that and the Pragyan rover emerged from its cocoon to take its first steps on the lunar surface, drive around a bit and test out all of its equipment. Just what an incredible day it was and massive congratulations to everyone at ISRO and everyone else connected with the success of Chandrayaan-3. India get to claim all of the glory in this instance. But how exactly did that happen with Luna 25 having been launched afterwards on a direct ascent trajectory and seemingly like it was going to overtake Chandrayaan-3 and land two days prior? Well, during the uh, the final deorbit phase and the, the lunar landing burn phase, uh, Roscosmos reported that there was some abnormal uh, data coming from the spacecraft. It had entered a phase that was unexpected. Uh, a short while later, they released a statement saying that Luna 25 had unexpectedly increased in velocity and when they tried to make contact with the spacecraft, believed and found that it no longer existed. This was a rather ominous statement. You see, normally when something goes wrong with a landing and you're pretty confident that your lander is in fact on that planetary body, you would say something to the effect that you've been trying to communicate but were unable to reach it. In this case, they seem to indicate that Luna 25 no longer existed. And indeed, from the initial telemetry that uh, has been seen floating around on the internet, it appears that Luna 25 impacted the surface of the moon at somewhere over 5,000 miles per hour, completely obliterating the spacecraft and turning it into a million tiny little pieces. All politics aside, of course, on this channel, from a scientific perspective, this is really gutting because there were some great scientific instruments on board that spacecraft and I really do feel for everyone connected with that project. This was Russia's return to the moon after 47 years and it's unfortunately continues the trend in Russia's recent deep space exploration missions which have all ended in disaster. The Phobos grunt mission from over 20 years ago failed to even escape the gravitational influence of the Earth and ended up burning up upon re-entry. And now Luna 25 has crashed into the moon. Much like with Chandrayaan 2, uh, Russia have two more missions in the future planned with Luna 26 and Luna 27, as well as plans to send humans to the moon with China. Who knows if plans uh, will be affected by this failure, but an internal investigation will now commence. And hopefully within the coming months, we should get some more details on that. However, it does mean that India, like I said, gets to claim all of the glory. They have become the first nation to successfully land a spacecraft at the lunar south pole, or as close to it as you can get at the moment, and the fourth country overall behind the USSR and the United States and China to land something on the surface of the moon. It's just an absolutely unbelievable week that we have had. And like I said, it's going to be there for the next lunar day, conducting various scientific experiments uh, and whatnot. So I cannot wait to see the results that it brings. 
I can't wait to see what this history-making event truly unfolds to be. Um, absolutely incredible. Massive congratulations once again to the whole team and to the continued success of India's spaceflight program. Thank you ever so much for watching. I've been Tom June and I'll see you next time.